will be on the yacht. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission of the City of Cape Coral. Today is Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. We'll have a moment of silence, and then we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which we stand. Thank you. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, Chair. Benny? Here. Marker? Here. O'Connor? Here. Reed? Here. Summers? Here. Safranek? Here. Six present. Very good, thank you. I have a review or approval of our minutes from September 1st, 2021. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner O'Connor and a second by Commissioner uh, Su Summers. Summers. Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Yes. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. Do we have a review or discussion of our minutes from September 15th? There was a special meeting, 2021. We have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner O'Connor and a second by Commissioner Summers. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll or the Ye vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Summers. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Safranic. Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Very good, thank you. Let's see, we have to elect this morning a member for a liaison from the Planning and Zoning Commission to the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. How many times do they meet a year, um, Madam Clerk? Once or twice? Just one moment. Well, take your time. They meet quarterly. Quarterly, okay. So four times. Anyone interested? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, ma'am. I mean, I would volunteer to do it I, as, an, as an alternate. Am I allowed to do so? Yes. All right. You also? Yeah. Oh, unless uh, unless someone else would like to do it. Um, well, we can make a vote. See who decides that or wants to oh, do it. Oh, that's fine. I'll, if no one else wants to do it. I, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, retract. Okay. Great. Very good. Okay. So, so we have a vote for Commissioner O'Connor to be our Affordable Housing Advisory Committee liaison. Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. You might want to make, that. make a formal motion in a second okay. and then vote. Okay. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Benny and a second by Safranic, Commissioner Safranic. Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Very good. Uh, this morning, we will be conducting interviews with the applicants for uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission. Two applicants for uh, our regular members and one applicant for the um, alternate. Those are the three seats that are open. 
I guess we'll get right to it and start with the interview. First applicant will be a Donald James Apting. If you'd like to get up and say a few words about yourself. Morning, thank you. Uh, I'm a resident of uh, Cape Coral Southwest for the last three years. Uh, currently uh, retired. I uh, was did planning and uh, the uh, for small to large corporations for equipment uh, applications in municipal and wastewater plant. Um, worked closely with the EPA on registrations and was a primary lead for patent applications with various companies I work for. Uh, current community involvement, I'm uh, on the Charter Review Commission and the Adopt a Median. Uh, looked at various things that are important. One of them is the uh, master uh, plan and the city charter. I think both uh, documents affect the uh, quality of life here in Cape Coral. Uh, the master plan, looking at the six initiatives for growth for a city that's doubled in population in the last 20 years. Uh, two of today's uh, topics for discussion, capital improvement element and the economic development are more important as ever as Cape Coral grows. Uh, the current growth rate is similar to the early 2000s. However, this growth spurt will greatly affect the uh, Cape Coral more than anything else because the decisions we make now as far as density and the support items that we need as far as fire safety, uh, support uh, the environment, uh, whatever we can do, uh, not only short term but long term is have to, we have to look at uh, what decisions we make and the planning and zoning commission. So I think with my past experience, I'd like to contribute being retired now, I have plenty of time on my hands and uh, would like to uh, take a look at it. Thank you very much. Thank you for applying. Let's see, next will be Robert Bridge. Bridges? Bridgen, I said. I've got Bearden, I'm sorry. No, oh, wait a minute, I got it backwards. There was a Mary Bearden first. Is she here? Yes. I'm sorry, I, I, I overstepped her. Mary, if you'd like to speak next, please. I'm just trying to keep them in order because there's 14 of them. Good morning. Um, I am applying for this um, position because I want to contribute to the community that I've adopted. Um, I'm a retiree of the Ohio Public Employees Retirement System. I uh, had a very rewarding career in economic development. Um, over the course of my career, several communities were mostly startup organizations where they wanted a development department uh, coordinating with planning. And I moved here, or I should say the moving van moved in our driveway on March 1st of 2020, and I sat in our house for one year and tried to uh, learn about Cape Coral, and I managed to find the public store and the drug store and the things, but did not meet a lot of people that helped me get uh, organized and uh, acclimated to the community. Um, I want to be involved. I want to contribute. I want to plug in where I can be helpful. And my career, I think, and my resume will show you that my experience has uh, <coughs> shown that I have those qualities. I have sat on the planning commission before in another community, and it was very rewarding um, because you get to see and feel the pulse of the community. And I think that's very important that that's the, uh, the rationale for why you're doing things. Planning is the basis for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I forgot to ask if any of the commissioners have uh, questions for any of the applicants. Do you have any questions for the uh, first applicant? Apting? No? Actually, I, I do. Um, Mary, wait, because I'm going to have to see if anybody has questions for her. I'm sorry, I got it backwards again. Go ahead. Sure. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your involvement in the Southwest? Uh, you mentioned SWCAC and some of your community involvement. Oh, so I'm involved in the uh, Southwest Cape Coral Action Committee and uh, been working directly with the city on the Adopt a Median program uh, with the various neighborhood organizations and uh, the uh, nonprofit uh, Friends of the Cape Coral Environment. Uh, so we're trying to get that started. 
uh, by involving the community and the community businesses. So that's, uh, we're getting uh, going as far as I think when a lot of the snowbirds come back in the next uh, few months, uh, we feel that we can uh, make a lot of strides from that. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Benny. Charter Review Commission, yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Same as Ms. Yes. Are you serving on the affordable housing? I have, sir, yes. Are you serving on a committee now? No, I'm not serving on any com boards or commissions here. No, she's not anything. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Next, Mr. Bridges. Good morning and thank you. My name is Robert Bridges. Um, I'm currently a full-time resident of the city of Cape Coral. I retired from uh, the Chicago Police Department after I've served 26 years of uh, active duty, uh, dedicating my career to public service. In Chicago, I was a member of the uh, local school council for the Chicago Public Schools, where we uh, sought to uh, better the individual schools, to better help the children of the city. I also served on uh, several neighborhood committees uh, in Chicago. I'm uh, applying for this position because I'd like to be involved in the long-term uh, planning of the city of Cape Coral. Uh, even though I just moved here a uh, short amount of time ago, uh, this is going to be my permanent residence. Uh, I like the city of Cape Coral and what it has to offer, and I would like to be more involved in, in, uh, in the affairs of moving the city forward in a positive manner. That's basically it. Does any of the commissioners have questions for Mr. Bridges? So you've lived here for six months? Yes, we moved in uh, April 10th, I believe. Okay, very good. Thank you for your service as a police officer. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Enrico Fioretti. Did I pronounce it right? Yes, you did. Thank you. Good. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. Thank you for your time this morning and for consider considering me a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. My name is Enrico, but I go by Ken. Uh, that's my middle name. Uh, my family and I moved to Cape Coral this year from New Jersey. Uh, after we sold our house and everything up there, packed, up it, packed everything up, and after a long and arduous journey, moved in. And as of May, uh, we've been permanent residents, and I've not had a bad day since. Um, Professionally, I work in commercial real estate development, having been an applicant uh, dozens of times before numerous commissions, councils, and committees. Uh, my company even did a project in Cape Coral. We built the tractor supply up on Pine Island Road. Uh, I, didn't, I, I wasn't the development manager on that, but we did track the project, and it was a, uh, a mostly painless and enjoyable experience. Uh, the store is open, and uh, it's operating, and it's, uh, it's doing very well, by the way. Uh, when I lived in New Jersey, I was a commissioner on the planning, de the planning board in my town, so I participated on the board as both an applicant and a member. Uh, I've, been, I've seen uh, many projects. Uh, we had uh, a lot of different types, whether commercial or residential, and I always try to look at the applications, whether as applicant or a board member from both sides, looking at the intent of the law and the letter of the law and weighing both sides because there's a, it's never a clear cut, you know, it has to be this, and it's always a balancing act. You have to say what's best for the community, but also what's best for the actual property owner, the intent, and making sure that you're not just saying, okay, it has to be this, but there's also a greater good that goes into an application. Is this something that's gonna benefit the community? Is this something that's gonna benefit the owner? The developers are expending hundreds of thousands of dollars, and their, their rights are also need to be considered 
Uh, so it's a balancing act. Uh, I've always tried to be a voice of reason, it's, and it's just something that's, you know, a uh, what's best for the community, but also what's best for uh, the individuals. So um, that's the experience that I bring. I've got a lot of experience understanding land use, planning, zoning, engineering, so I can, uh, technically, I can assist in that area. Uh, but I'd also like to just uh, be a part of the community, expand uh, what I've already started here, and uh, happy to uh, um, appreciate your time. Is there any, anything I'd like to know, any questions you have? Any questions, commissioners? No? Nope. nope. Thank you. Really appreciate your applying. Thank you. William Gilbert. He was one that didn't check in, so. Wayne Heck. Was Gilbert a alternate? I don't remember. I don't know what I want. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wayne Hecht. Uh, I've been a resident in Cape Coral full time now for nine years. I live in the Northwest, District 6. I'm um, a licensed realtor, licensed auctioneer, certified appraiser. Um, obviously, up in the Northwest, I think that's probably the fastest growing area of the Cape. Um, and I want to, uh, you know, be part of the future of Cape Coral. This is my adopted city now, so I want to help out any way that I can. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? Thank nope. you. Thank you. How many years have you been here, Mr. Heck? Nine years. Nine. Julia Moore. Good morning. I've been a resident <clears throat> of Cape Coral for 14 years. I live up in the northwest corner and um, 35 years career in advertising and public relations. So uh, I did radio advertising, television advertising. I know it's not really, uh, you know, uh, the line of, uh, you know, zoning in that, but I really want to get involved. I just retired in February, so I got to retire a little early. And um, I just want to uh, offer my abilities to try to help and, you know, uh, grow the city. And, you know, I love this city. Like I said, I've been here for 14 years. I just took over <clears throat> the um, block captain uh, for Neighborhood Watch. I'm also a member of uh, the Northwest uh, Cape Coral uh, Neighborhood Association and um, you know just looking to get involved and you know be part of the community as well. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Moore? Okay. No? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Safranic? That would be me. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, would you like to say anything about yourself? Um, and you're applying for a regular for a full, yeah for, for an alternate now and applying for the regular membership right uh -huh. very good i'm just reading the list okay do you have, Jack any, do you have any questions for me or anything to, okay thank you okay because he was the no show the one that said he wasn't coming okay yes chair that's correct he informed me he'd be unable to attend Stephen Soloway. No show. He's a no show. He said he wasn't coming. Good morning, guys. I'm Steve. Um, I've lived in Cape Coral for about 20 years now. I've got four children. They're all growing up here. Um, I volunteer at my kids' little league. Um, really, anything that they're involved in, I try to be in as as evolved as possible as well. Um, the reason I'm interested is because I'm gonna be here for another 20 years, and I wanna make sure that you know, when things come up and there's changes being made to the city that the things make sense, they make sense for my family, and they're gonna make sense for other people's family for the next 20, 30, 100 years that Cape Coral's here. And I'm a real estate agent with a background in construction. My family owns construction companies. Any questions for the young? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Michael Sullivan.
Good morning. I'm a local business owner here. Um, I've lived in Cape Coral since uh, 2005, been in Southwest Florida since 1998. Um, I own a construction company and a millworks company. Um, and I'm just looking to get involved in uh, local government and uh, hoping I could be uh, some help and service. So. Any questions for Mr. Sullivan? So you've been here for about 17 years? In the case. Yes. Just under 17 in Cape Coral. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. John Taliski. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. You did. All right. Thanks. Morning, everyone. My name is John Taliski. I live in the Northwest Cape. Uh, I retired down here from New York State, where I was a state correction sergeant for 35 years, also a police officer. I dealt with um, the Zoning Board of Appeals, that's what it's called up in uh, upstate New York, for 12 years where I became the chairman of the committee. And we had exponential growth like we have down here in Cape Coral, which you guys already know that we doubled our population here in the last 20 years, which the census says here in the last two weeks. So we're gonna have massive growth living in the Northwest Cape. It's coming my direction and I'd like to be involved, you know, on the ground and watching that growth and helping the city move forward in a positive manner. Um, I believe that this budget that the council put together is we're, we're definitely heading in the right direction on looking at our situation with burnt store. So we're not gonna end up with another Pine Island that we're trying to catch up after the massive amount of people, you know, come in here. We have a 92% uh, build out rate to eight percent commercial which you guys know and we need to do something about that before it's too late before our population doubles again and we don't have any uh, grocery stores or pharmacies or anything like that on the burnt store corridor and I stand before you asking for your support to become on the committee because I believe I can uh, be a positive influence you have any questions for me questions how many years have you lived here I bought my first house down here in 2011. I retired down here in 2015. Thank you. Thank you. Arboro Wolford. Good morning. You'll have to excuse me. I'm a little nervous. I've never done this before. Um, I'm retired land use board secretary. I worked for the local town that we resided in uh, for eight years. I did uh, land use board, zoning. Uh, I worked with the zoning official and also the construction official. I issued all of the construction permits for the town. When, I, when we moved there, there was a population of 8,000 and then it grew and grew and grew and I decided, well, it was time to retire uh, because I had to hire a lot of people to help out. Um, we have been here for roughly 13 years, um, and I volunteer. I've done quite a bit of volunteer work in the town. I worked at the library for about three years, volunteering. I volunteered at Kiwanis Thrift Store for about eight, and I'm currently at the uh, Cape Coral Care Center working there. And I just enjoyed my job so much working in the town, and when I saw the ad in the paper, I figured, okay, I was going to put an application in. And that's it. Any other questions? Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Jeanette York. I was worried you were going to do this alphabetically, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be last. Anyway, I go by Jean. Um, my name's Jean York. I appreciate this opportunity to appear before the Planning and Zoning Commission for the city of Cape Coral. I've lived in Cape Coral for just under 10 years. My husband and I moved here from St. Petersburg where we were since 1996. And I should say, my daughter's been down here for 20 years, so um, we did have a condo for a while before we moved here permanently, um, like 10 years ago. And um, we live in Sandoval right now. Um, although we moved to this area to be near family, we chose the city of Cape Coral primarily because it's a planned community. The comprehensive plan provides guidelines for regulating growth, 
I like that our city has a largely young population and that we have a healthy mix of residential areas, including the single family homes as well as low and medium density multifamily homes. And we also have attractive and well-designed commercial areas. I believe this is a city where people both live and work, and in large part that's because we're so, our population is so young. You might have read in my application that I'm a lawyer, and I attended the University of Maryland School Law School. I'm a member of the Maryland Bar, and I'm listed online on the Maryland Courts Attorney Portal. I worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs in Veterans Benefits Law, both in Washington and in St. Pete. My job involved, among many other things, reviewing cases from the Federal Veterans Court to determine if our regulations correctly followed federal statutes. I assisted in drafting, drafting and amending regulations, as well as drafting and explaining procedures relating to veterans benefits. In St. Pete, I also worked as a hearing officer at the regional office there, where I conducted hearings both informal and formal with veterans and their advocates. I say all of this only to explain that I'm familiar with reviewing, interpreting, and applying statutes, regulations, and procedures to specific situations. I believe in public service, as you can tell by my work history. I'd love to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission in order to work with a team of people committed to the orderly development of our city. Um, and I just wanted to say I primarily would bring analytical skills to the table. I'm well versed in reviewing applicable provisions of law, such as the Land Development Code, and I could determine how they apply in a given situation. In addition, I'm a practiced writer, and I can explain my thought processes or those of the commission in narrative form, and I consist with um, any recommendations that we make um, for text amendments to the comprehensive plan, future land use plan, or land use code. I have a lot more here written, but I think that's enough for now. Do you have any questions for me? Quick, quick question, are you, are you currently retired? I am, What I retired from VA in 2013, but then I started representing some veterans, which is why I haven't done much volunteer work up till now. So I was working for myself until last year when I finally decided that that was enough of that. So I am retired, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Um, we have three seats. Two of them are regular members. One of them is an alternate. The first regular, or regular men, uh, member, uh, the term expires on the 28th of uh, February next year. So that will be the first one that we will vote on. Does anyone have a nomination? for the first regular member that expires on 2022. Well, I nominate uh, Mr. Fiore. We have to have a second? Yes. yes. I'll second that. See, we have a nomination by Commissioner Benny, and we have a second by Commissioner O'Connor. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the vote? Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranix? Nay. Five ayes, one nay. Motion carried. The next nomination will be for the regular member that expires in 2023. Would somebody like to make a nomination? I nominate Commissioner Safranek, please. Second. We have a nomination for Commissioner Safranek for the regular member by Commissioner Benny. We have the second by Commissioner O'Connor. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the vote? Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranek? Uh, I don't think I can oh. vote for myself. Yes, you can. 
Uh, yeah, yes, you can. There's no, there's no financial benefit. You're a volunteer, so. <laughs> Yes, no I'd problem like, with you voting. I'd like to serve, yes. I'll vote for myself. Thank you. <laughs> All wise motion carried. Thanks. <laughs> the last uh, nomination will be for the alternate that will also expire in 2022, February 28th. I'd like to nominate uh, Gene York. Second. We have a nomination by Commissioner O'Connor and a second by Commissioner Summers. Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Sofranic? Nay. Good Five night. ayes, one nay. Motion carried. So we are a recommending body. The City Council is who makes the decision. Our recommendations will go on to the City Council meeting. And the City Council meeting is when? October 20th. The 20th. So we have uh, Fioretti as the regular member that will expire next year, Safranic for the regular member that will expire in 23, and uh, York for the alternate position. We really appreciate everybody applying. This is the most I have ever seen any applications, and I've been sitting on this board for 19 years. Sometimes there were none. We went months and months with not enough people. So I really appreciate it. it was, it's, I'm happy to see that there are people in the community willing to serve for free. Because it's a lot of work. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Soprani? Yeah, I, I'm really impressed by the turnout. Uh, and everyone's background is so impressive. And, and the, the willingness Absolutely. and desire to serve. There are so many opportunities within the, these commissions. It's just amazing. You can either keep an eye on the city clerk's um, website, um, and also all of the openings are published in Cape Coral Breeze and probably some other places too. So I would strongly encourage you to um, continue, again, ap apply for other things. Your skills and devotion are really needed in the community. So thank you for coming out and applying today. Commissioner Benny. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to also say all the applicants are outstanding. I really appreciate you all coming out and you made our choice very difficult. So thank you and keep your eye out for openings that will occur. I believe we're going to create another position with Commissioner Sopranics leaving the alternate position, correct? So. Yeah, we'll have an alternate open, right? Yes, there will be one opening up very soon right. again. So again, thank you all so much for coming. See, we need to review our meeting schedule for 2022. Has everyone reviewed it? And does everyone have any discrepancies or things that they need to might change? Or can everyone make it? We have a motion. I move to accept the current uh, meeting schedule. We have a motion for approval of our meeting schedule by Commissioner Sopranic. Second. And a second by Commissioner Somers. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the vote? Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Sopranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. We're moving right on to the meet. <clears throat> Will the city attorney please call ordinance 80 21? Yes, Chair. An ordinance amending the City of Cape Coral Land Development Code, amending Article 3, Development Review, Chapter 3, Specific Review Procedures, Administrative Permits and Approvals, Section 3.3.6, Administrative Deviations, regarding deviations for boat canopies. Uh, amending Article 3, Development Review, Chapter 4, Specific Review Procedures, Quasi-Judicial Permits and Approvals, Section 3.4.2, Deviations, Regarding Deviations from Marine Improvement Dimensional Standards. Amending Article 5, Development Standards, Chapter 2, Accessory Structures, Section 5.2.10, Gazebos, Sun Shelters, and Similar Shelters. 
regarding height requirements, amending Article 5, Development Standards, Chapter 4, Marine Improvements, Section 5.4.2, General Requirements, Section 5.4.3, Dimensional Standards, Section 4, 5.4.4, Joint Marine Improvements, Section 5.4.6, Davits, Watercraft Lifts and Floating Docks, Section 5.4.7, Boat Canopies, and Section 5.4.10, Construction Standards. Regarding requirements for marine improvements, deleting Section 5.4.5, keys and mooring piles, and creating Section 5.4.11, deviations, establishing procedures for deviations from the requirement of Chapter 4. Amending Article 11, definitions, Chapter 1, general provisions, Section 11.2, definitions, by adding definitions for sun shelter and thatched roof, providing severability and effective date. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Heller. Good morning, Justin Heller, Senior Planner with the Cape Coral Planning Division. Uh, I bring before you a text amendment. Um, this is in continuation with our calibration of the new land development code. Um, we have proposed some necessary changes, um, mostly to the marine improvement uh, section of the code. So what is a marine improvement? This includes the dock, boat lift, mooring post, walkways, or other um, interconnected parts. So brief summary of our changes. Um, during the development of the uh, land development code back in 2018, uh, in an effort to streamline the new code, uh, the consultants inadvertently eliminated um, several sections of this code. Some of those ended up being important sections that were eliminated. Um, so one of the things we did was brought back some of that original code from the uh, land use and development regulations. Um, like I said, we re we're restoring some of that language we're also uh, reformatting, uh, cor correcting some grammatical errors, and adding some new language for clarification purposes. Um, we will be restoring the deviation process for marine improvements. Um, this was in the uh, land use and development regulations previously, um, but that was removed in the new code, so we are also bringing those back. Uh, we have some companion changes to Article 3 and Article 5 as well. So the proposed changes to Article 3, Chapter 3, uh, this is our deviation section, Section 3.3.6, administrative deviations. Um, we're going to bring back um, the administrative deviations for boat canopy length and width up to a maximum of 10% above the standard. Right now you can have a boat canopy up to 40 feet. This would allow through the administrative process for them to get up to an additional four feet of boat canopy length. Section 3.4.2, this is uh, regular deviations. These are deviations that would go to public hearing. Uh, we would restore that process for dimensional standards that do not qualify for the administrative deviation. So pretty much everything other than the boat canopy or boat canopies that people want to go above that maximum of 10% for the administrative deviation. And these would go to the hearing examiner for approval. Article 5, Chapter 2. Um, this is, um, deals with gazebos, sun shelters, and similar structures. We're just restoring some language from the previous code that was inadvertently deleted. And the main chapter, chapter four, for the marine improvements. Um, most of the changes that we have uh, proposed um, are restoring text that was eliminated along with some definitions. Uh, chapter four was reformatted to accommodate the prior language, um, also to eliminate some duplicate text and to provide the needed clarification. We also have graphics um, that were part of that, that were also relabeled. Um, they were originally labeled as sections, which became confusing. 
Um, so they're now relabeled as, as graphics. Um, so some of this new language uh, that was added for clarification, um, an example of this includes clarifying the maximum projection standards for N parcels on canals versus N parcels on lakes and basins. Um, some other changes um, for boat canopies, the, the current code um, based off of how we've been implementing it was found to be overly restrictive to certain properties with only a boat lift and no dock or those with a very small dock. And it was essentially preventing them from having a boat canopy or a boat canopy large enough to actually cover their boat. So we corrected that language. Um, again, the deviation section um, is proposed to be added back in for administrative and regular deviations. And the standards for those are similar to those that previously appeared in the land use and development regulations. So in summary, the new language and reformatting are gonna provide better organization and clarity to these regulations. Uh, they'll restore the deviation process, um, which interjects flexibility into the code by allowing the property owners to seek relief from site-specific hardships imposed by the regulations. And I'll stand by for any questions you may have regarding this ordinance. The city's the applicant, so I'll open it to public hearing. This is a public hearing. Does anyone have any questions regarding this ordinance? Would like to make any statements? Seeing none, I close public hearing. Back to the commission. Commissioners, you have any comments? Questions, arguments? Um, I do. Commissioner O'Connor, <coughs> please. So basically, this is um, a housekeeping from the Land Development Code uh, of 2018. Correct, yes. And the, um, the deviation process is a slight enhancement to the way the current yeah uh, currently if you wanted to um say you wanted to build a bigger dock than the code allowed you would have to go through the variance process and that's very difficult to get an approval through the variance process thank you any other questions we have a motion i make a motion to approve we have a motion for approval by Commissioner O'Connor, and we have a second by Commissioner uh, Summer. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll or vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. The City Attorney, please call our ordinance 51 21. <laughs> Thank you. In ordinance amending the City of Cape Coral comprehensive plan by amending the future land use map from commercial professional to multifamily residential. Land use for property located as lots 15 through 27, block 1458, unit 16, lots 45 to 52, and, and 59 to 72, block 1322, unit 18, lots 1 through 24, and 31 through 34, Block 3083, Unit 62. And lots 1 through 22, Block 4454, Unit 63. From a commercial professional to single family residential, land use for property described as lots 1 through 26, Block 4448, Unit 63. And lots 1 through 8, and lots, or and 12 through 20, Block 3169, Unit 66 from multifamily residential to commercial activity center. Land use for property described as lots 15 through 22, block 4685, unit 70. And then from multifamily residential to single family residential, land use for property described as lots one through 44, block 4727, unit 70. From Pine Island Road District to single family residential, land use for property described as lots 42 through 61, block 1501, unit 47,
part one, lots one through 32, block 3570, unit 47, part one, lots one through 18, 22 through 34, and 37 through 45, block 3571 and unit, 47, or unit 47, part one, lots one through eight and 21 through 26, block 3575, unit 47, part one, lots 19, 19 through 21, block 3571, unit 47, part four, lots three through 10, block 2030, unit 31, part two, and lots 24 through 46, block 4560, unit 68, all in Cape Coral subdivision, providing severability and an effective date. That's a mouthful. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Heller? Good morning again. Justin Heller, senior planner with the Cape Coral Planning Division. Um, if this ordinance seems familiar, it's because it has been in front of you before. Um, it is back here in front of you due to a um, advertising error, so it had to be sent back through the whole um, process again. Um, previously, you, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commi Commission did vote for approval. It went to council. They also uh, voted for transmittal. Um, so I will be here for questions if you have any. If you need me to go through the whole presentation again, I can do that. Um, but I'll stand by for questions. Thank you. Uh, the city's the applicant. So this is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public wish to speak? Please come forward and speak to the mic, sir. Good morning. My name is Vincent Lehman. I own a property in what we're talking about. My property is 522 Northeast 15th Place. It's like two houses off of Del Prado. It's kind of on a peninsula. Um, I bought that property in August 1st. set ready hold up sorry that was our first time I was <laughs> he fell asleep on the uh, control board <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a 10 minute recess while he fixes the machines.
Go ahead, please continue okay. <clears throat> the interruption. Thank you. All right. I'll start from the beginning again. My name is Vincent Lehman. Um, I own a property that's in uh, zoning, rezoning, 522 Northeast 15th place. Um, owned the property like 40, 40 something, uh, 40 plus years. Um, I came to uh, the meeting, I think August 17th, and tried to state my case on why I was against the rezoning of my property. All the other properties out there, I think, were really okay uh, to, to rezone that neighborhood, the nobility neighborhood, and maybe more of them houses are built in the late 60s, early 70s. I think it's good for the other people. I didn't think it was good for me anyway. I came to the meeting and tried to state my case, but a few weeks after I received a letter from Cape Coral, and dated the same day as the meeting, it was like a 12-page letter recommending that everything go through. The only thing it stated about me was that Vincent Lehman came and thought his property would lose value because of the rezoning. I didn't think I stated it that way. I know I don't talk so well, but um, that wasn't my intention at all. Um, I own two, I'm in the construction business. I, I, I have two, um, uh, they're, uh, Two, two, uh, two licenses, two, two business licenses that are up, up to date. I have them. I keep a trailer parked at that property, yet with tools in it. I got like one more year to, um, before I take a full retirement, but I still plan on working. Uh, lawn care and concrete. I have a son coming out of the military, 21 years. He'll be back in like one year. We kind of had plans to do something in business. I still plan on working, but with that property that that I have there, it's two houses off of Del Prado, I can keep tools there yet. I can keep trailers. I can keep my lawn trailer. I can keep my covered trailer with concrete tools in there. That um, I was zoned, they zoned commercial corridor or whatever it was. I can't quite keep up with it. It was like in the middle 90s that that they changed that zoning there. And since they did that, the whole block, right out my driveway, the whole block of houses was taken down. Um, and they built a, I think it's a two-story daycare center there, right out of my driveway, in a strip store along the side. Um, behind me, uh, people bought a house right on the corner. Well, they're right directly behind me because it's more lots. Um, a construction company, um, there's two dump trucks, van, three, four trailers sitting in it. That's right behind me. I checked the zoning. They're zoned right now office medical. So evidently they got an exemption. Me right now, I'm zoned residential one, which I don't think I am. I think I still should be, according to the, according to the Lee County website, I am zoned residential one. I called the city and they said, oh, don't worry about that. That's not right. So I'm kind of thinking that really nothing really came about of anything that I came to the meeting, that it was already a done deal, um, a change in the zoning. But um, I just kind of felt I needed that property to still do business, um, to do business uh, with my two companies is commercial where I can still keep my not big equipment, not bulldozers or anything like that, just trailers, maybe a lawn trailer that I could park it there. Just uh, maybe I could get the same consideration as the property directly behind me who evidently will not be rezoned residential one, which, you know, I know it says office medical, but I have pictures of the dump trucks in there. I, I, I went to check on the, on the address, take a picture of it, just so I wouldn't forget what the address was. But in the picture, there was you know, construction equipment in there, way more than what I would have in, in, uh, on my property. So it really wasn't, I didn't think that 
the value that my house would lose value. I didn't thought I re I didn't really think I portrayed it that way, but I just really didn't want it to go to the council commissioners or whatever saying that uh, he's a disgruntled guy and he's going to lose money on the house. That's not really what it was about at all. It was about uh, you know me still having a place. You know, 25 years I kept construction equipment there. Now all of a sudden the city's saying no, no. <laughs> Now I can't, so um, that's all. I just, I, I didn't think it would be that hard, just that one little corner there. It's a little peninsula right there on uh, Del Prado. Like I say, the guy behind me has is, is got that exemption. I was just uh, hopefully be considered for the same kind of exemption. I think that's about all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Next. Please state your name. Good morning. Uh, my name is Danus Kugoda. I came from Chicago in hopes again. If you remember, I was here four or five months ago. Uh, well, I'm uh, actually considering the uh, lot. I'm the owner of lot 12, 13, and 14, block 4685, unit 70. That's where you, um, there was the Gohor shoe, the, uh, what, uh, uh, where they're trying to uh, uh, do a commercial activity center. And um, actually, I don't know, like I just received last time, um, looks like my property was removed already from the development planning. And now I received a letter. It shows again, like uh, they uh, wanted to uh, uh, replace, I mean, just do the mice in there, like it shows black. 12 to, tw uh, no, I'm sorry, lot 12 to 22 in this letter. So I just want to make sure if, if my property is still there or, or Yeah, not. according to this, your property is still in it. Still in there, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, again, so like I told you last time, it was like a lot of years of work where we've been looking to get, you know, the, the lot to build a dream, dream house and everything. And uh, now it's just ruining everything. So I, uh, just like asking like your support, like just to leave it, uh, this property, you know, like for us, I mean, just because if the commercial center, I mean, it's. Right, they're trying to square it off. I see what they're doing. Yeah. So I just, like I said, I just looking for your support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public wish to speak? <coughs> Seeing no more, close public hearing. Back to the commission, commissioners. No? Uh, Commissioner Sat, uh, Seth Rannick. You're going to get that right eventually. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. Um, am I just a question um, for Mr. Keller? Um, am I correct in understanding that the city council has passed this already? and it's just back to us or it's going through the process because of a technical um, aspect in the advertising of the amendment. Is that correct? Justin Heller, senior planner. Yes, uh, that is correct. Okay, thank you. I just want to make a quick clarification for um, Dana. His property has been removed. Um, the ordinance has removed his property from um, consideration that was done at the council level. Was that not the 12 through 14? That was, yeah, 12, 12 and 14, yeah, 12 through 14. Okay. 12 through 14. Yes, it's 15 through 22. Yep, okay. Yeah, now it's In block 4685? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, sir, your property has been removed from the land use change. That's in the legal, and we're looking at it on you know, little pictures, and it still shows it in the pictures. So. Commissioner Benny. Yes, I was just uh, concerned about the other gentleman's uh, situation. Has there been any examination of that as to his, I'm so sorry, I forget the gentleman's name, but is he going to have to apply for a specific variant because of this uh, permit? Or? As far as I'm aware, um, if his properties right now he can keep his trailers on site because he has the commercial corridor 
the zoning, if it is, um, obviously this has to go through the rezone process, this is just the future land use, but if it is rezoned to R1 and the primary use is his single family home, uh, that he can still operate his business out of his home, a home-based business, but he would not be able to store his trailers on site. But he would have the opportunity to try to rezone that after yeah, this? Yeah, anyone can apply for a rezone if they, if they want. And do we, uh, city attorney, do we have the ability to, uh, to, uh, to have a conditional approval with the exception for this? You can make recommendations, but I'm kind of lost because everything I heard from the gentleman was about a rezoning. This is a land use land thing. Use. Mm -hmm. so right. So his rezoning has nothing to do with this. The issue of the trailers and whether he can keep the ones he's had for, for, for 25 years that they've been there, I would just not think that it would be fair for that to be pulled out from under him if it's been grandfathered for such a long time. Legal. I don't know the specific issue of this gentleman because he was speaking to a rezoning and, and this is a land use change, so I don't understand his concern. Commissioner Safranic. So, would, would you suggest that this gentleman, maybe in a different forum or a different method, um, try to get satisfaction for his property? Is that, would that be your suggestion? And that, that we should pass this body or this land use recommendation and that he should pursue his property rezoning? In a Possibly staff could provide, I don't even know where he is in this land use change. So okay. what property are we talking about? And maybe you could give us a little yeah, um, around here. Because I have no one. idea what property we're talking about. There's a if lot of lots, blocks and block. Three five seven zero. Maybe on page seven of the staff report, or sorry, page eighteen of the staff report. I believe he's one of the properties. Three, five, Which seven, block seven. is it? Three five seven zero. Hmm. I think he's one of the f first. One's off of Del Prado on the north side. So approving the future land use, he will still, after this, retain his corridor zoning. And with the corridor zoning still in place, he can still continue to have his trailers. But when the zoning <coughs> ordinance comes um, which is going to follow this at that point um, if it gets changed to r1 then he would not be able to continue to store the trailers there so this will not have any impact him on him directly until the rezone w what is the property currently zoned corridor. it's commercial corridor and it's improved it's improved. So yeah. the, so th this would have no effect on his parking today? His okay. ability to operate his business at this time. Well, the parking issue parking, he, he's right. concerned with. Okay. Thank you. So just a clarification from the city attorney. He is in, obviously in compliance with the zoning regulations today. If he was to apply through his business license for a certificate of use on that property for his business, would he be able to carry that forward into the future after the rezoning of the property? You'd have to rezone the, he wants to carry forward a certificate of use on a R1? It's not R1 now. Yes. It's currently right now it's commercial, commercial corridor. If he was to get a certificate of use, would he be able to carry that forward? I realize today's uh, ordinance won't affect him because it is a future land use. But the second foot of that is going to be a zoning, a rezone, uh, once the future land use is approved. Um, at that time, if he was to receive a certificate of use, for the use that he has on it currently through his business, would that carry forward as a grandfathered use? If he got a certificate of use, correct. That would be a possibility um, to There's solve lots the issue. of possibilities. He could There's rezone. Yeah. Zoning has nothing to do with 
right. correct. Not today. Right. Yep. That's what my next statement was, is this isn't land use only. So. Staying on top. Right. Let's see. Any more comments by the commission? No? Seeing none. So you have a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by for approval by Commissioner O'Connor and a second by Commissioner Somers. Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Aye. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. The City Attorney, please call Ordinance 85-21. An ordinance amending the City of Cape Coral engineering design standards by repealing pages H1 through H9 of Section H seawalls and replacing the repealed pages with pages H1A through H1M, H2A through H2K, and H3A through H3G. Attach here to and incorporate are in by reference, providing severability and effective date. Thank you. The representative from the city. Yes, uh, should be coming up on the screen. Paul Klingen, Public Works Director. Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to ensure that we're okay. It looks like there might be something wrong with the oh, video and audio. Technical difficulties. Stand by for just one moment. Yes, if you just stand by for a second to see if we're still recording. We just lost all video. I think Brian did it when he walked in. He just, his, yeah. his magnetism did something. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, John. John. I didn't see your Yankees uh, coffee cup. I did not see it. <laughs> We're back up and running. So I've seen that issue several times and there's a couple other people oh the landing changes is on yeah oh yeah it'd be um, i think the logical oh, explanation go. if you have something that's on like going, changing quarterbacks you have a in the fourth quarter to get a certificate of use grandfather to use <laughs> and to, to read them the day i got on this board i had to get this if you oh yeah and it, they're pl Years. slowly cleaning it up yeah and it's just taking them forever uh -huh. we're, we're there we go all right mr clean them no, thank you, Paul Klingen, Public Works Director. Uh, this is a uh, seawall engineering design standard um, update. So we'll be discussing today the seawall installations, council approved seawalls, the engineering design standard changes, proposed seawall heights, seawall permitting, and the next steps. Uh, seawall installations, the EDS for seawalls was first established in 1988 with minor revisions in 2002 and are based on a precast concrete panel and a cast in place concrete cap. In 2017 Hurricane Irma came in and there was multiple seawall failures which prompted the review of the EDS. Public Works is responsible for the structural EDS, DCD is responsible for seawall permitting, inspections and final approval. Uh, when we look at the uh, seawall installations, uh, you know, new construction, there's a major seawall cap, tie rod failure, replacement required. Uh, you have seawall mid panel failure. You have uh, panel toe failure, which replacement is required. Sometimes there's minor seawall failures where repairs improved in front of an existing seawall. Each installation is site specific. So I'm sure you've seen some of the major seawall failures that have occurred. Uh, council had approved three different types. Uh, precast concrete panels is what was in the existing EDS. That's for new construction or replacement. That's the typical that you see that have been built and constructed for you know, over 50 years. Cast in place concrete in flat vinyl forms. That's for new construction or repair in front of an existing seawall. Then there's cast in place concrete and corrugated final sheeting. That's for repair in front of an existing seawall. So all these um, systems have uh, cast in place concrete in them as far as the structural component. So here's a typical precast concrete panel. 
where it matches new construction, replacement of the existing seawall. You've all seen these, I'm sure. Uh, this is the flat vinyl new construction where it matches. This is one that is a flat vinyl repair in front of the existing seawall. You can see the cap height is a little higher and the uh, vinyl repair is in front of the existing seawall. And here's a corrugated vinyl sheeting repair in front of an existing seawall. So the engineering design standards, as far as uh, Public Works and DCD met with stakeholders groups. And uh, we had Blow Engineering, where I was a structural engineer that we hired. Uh, we discussed this with the local seawall contractors, the CCCCIA, and the South Florida Marine Industry Association. We also consulted with the city of Punta Gorda, who actually has a program where they're responsible to uh, install the seawalls. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of information from them. So when we looked at the engineering design standards, some of the things that, of course, we discussed were the concrete caps, the concrete panels, steel reinforcement, uh, soil penetration, dead man anchors, tie back rods. So out of this, there's going to be a requirement that a, for these site-specific designs for the seawalls will be done by a professional engineer. Uh, the actual, the, uh, the Florida Building Code requires a PE design for retaining walls over four feet. Uh, and also that PE will be required to uh, do a certification for that seawall once it's constructed. As far as the seawall heights, we looked at this opportunity to take a look at the seawall sea wall heights. And the, along the river, in, in the majority of the saltwater canals is a 100-year flood zone. Then the majority of the freshwater canals is a 500-year flood zone. So you can see here the brown area there along the Caloosahatchee River. The yellow is that 100-year flood. Then the orange area is that 500-year flood, which is primarily uh, the freshwater canals. There's some overlap in each. All right, so along the river, there'd be a mandatory to raise the seawalls 24 inches for new house construction. Existing homes could get a variance for a 12 inch repair or to match the existing seawall. Saltwater canals, there will be the option to raise the seawalls 24 inches, 12 inch repair or match the existing seawall. And freshwater canals will maintain what it has in the past and that's to match the existing seawalls that are out there. Uh, just so you know, the freshwater canals, do, there is, there, it's not a requirement to put a seawall in. You can actually slope and grade uh, in the freshwater canals. Uh, so if there's a partial replacement of a seawall, the intent there is to match what was there. So um, of an existing seawall, if you're only replacing 20 feet of it, is to match what's existing. Uh, and then there's a new uh, requirement for the seawall sea ends will be level with site-specific design returns. So you can see here that the old EDS, when someone raised the seawall, they would slope it down to the existing seawall. But you can see the picture on the right, there's a situation where someone had sloped it down, someone put in a new seawall, and in order to match, you can see they're trying to match the uh, neighbor's seawall, but they can't get on that person's property. So this was the result of one of the fix, which uh, certainly structurally is okay, but doesn't aesthetically look good. Uh, so the, there's a requirement there that the returns will be right when a seawall is raised. And then thus when the, the next seawall comes in, they can certainly match and continue on without getting on someone else's property. Uh, so the seawall permitting, the new seawall EDS will be effective March 1st, 2022. Permits submitted to the, to the city prior to that effective date are grandfathered. Permits submitted to the Army Corps prior to the effective date will be grandfathered until approval. That was one of the discussions we had because that does take a while sometimes for those to get approved. So we're here at the Planning and Zoning Commission. We'll be uh, introducing October 20th to council with the final public hearing on November 3rd. 
And again, the new seawall EDS will be effective March 1st, 2022. Any questions? This is a public hearing. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on this ordinance? Seeing none, back to the commission. Commissioners, any questions? Sure. Um, so the reason for this review was because of the seawall failures during Irma. From my understanding, the majority of those seawalls were lower collapse. As a, a, a lower collapse was the seawall, the bottom of the seawall coming out in non-technical terms. It was uh, many. What would ha what happened is is uh, prior to Hurricane Irma, I don't know if you guys recall, there was uh, a couple weeks before we had like 20 inches of rain, so the soil was saturated. So it's called hydrostatic pressure. So the, the groundwater was very high. And then during Hurricane Irma, during the brackish, in the brackish water canals, the, the canals lowered and emptied as they do in a hurricane. Receding. And sometimes, you know, that surge that comes back. So once that canal lowered, that hydrostatic pressure behind the canals, either some of the occasions it actually kicked out the toe, some of the caps failed and some of the midpoint. And that's the, week, that's the point where the, uh, the water with the uh, tides, with the air, uh, anoxic, anoxic in, uh, in air, eats at the concrete and sometimes gets to the rebar. So there was many different types of failures. Okay, I think my point would be, so it looks like the main change we're seeing here is an increase in height of the seawalls. Is that expected to cure the issues that were seen during Irma? Because I just don't see the correlation there. Well, it, it was a combination of both. While we were doing the EDS, it was to beef up the, uh, uh, the seawall EDS. Then the question of the heights came in, especially along the river. And then also now with the 100-year flood requirement, everyone's putting more soil in to bring their homes up when they build a new home, and thus that requirement to bring up the seawall. Commissioner Benny. Uh, yes, thank you for your presentation. Uh, so existing properties wouldn't be affected and current applications wouldn't be affected until this completely goes in. That, that is correct. Thank you. And, and the reason for that was with, with their discussions with the seawall contractors, they you know they put in costs and if they get their permit in before that effective date, we'll hold that and the Army Corps Again, that time requirement. Any other questions? I have a question for you. Is there, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Sobrank. Thank you. Um, given the age of Cape Coral and the history of its development and the dredging and canals, do you have any uh, guesstimate about what percentage of the city's canals are vulnerable and um, would potentially within the next five to 10 years be subject to this regulation, basically needing to have serious repairs? Well, and, and just, I mean, this yeah, is the, just a discussion, really. The discussion was, uh, you know, a, a seawall, you know, should last probably 50 years. 50, five zero. So depending on how it was built, uh, how, when they build it, you know, do they penetrate into the soil enough and, mm -hmm. you know, if they hit coral rock. so. It is we rule, rule of thumb they should last 50 years and a, a lot of them are getting to that age and certainly the the ones that are in the brackish water related to uh, you know hurricane in and that release of the water mm -hmm. and that hydrostatic pressure are more vulnerable than those in the fresh water which are behind the wares and that levels pretty constant so, so this is really a, a sort of a big rolling upgrade that the city will be, or, or citizens, homeowners will be uh, facing over the next, well, if, on a rolling basis really going forward it, based on that assumption of a 50 year life of a. Right, but I, again, if um, Hurricane Irma was again, probably the, the perfect storm as yeah, far as all that rain ahead of time and that's, you know, just in itself, just normal operation, you know, that 50 year life. But, but yes, as, as you have this plan, like just same thing with our bridges, you know, we got to 
start thinking of our bridges that were built 50 years ago. Excellent. This is great. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Um, just a couple questions. What is the percentage of loss of a seawall before you require them to replace the entire seawall? So let's say a hurricane comes and knocks out about 30% of somebody's seawall. Well, we, we have that covered. And so, so basically, uh, you know, the majority of the seawalls have the, uh, uh, you know, to the left and the right, and then they have that concrete dock in the middle. And so let's say uh, one side of the concrete dock failed. Certainly that could be repaired, and that's where that partial comes in that we want them to repair it in kind so it sure. looks like the rest. So certainly I know there's been out there, there's been a couple panels that had to be repaired yeah. to the full, you know, 80 feet or more. So if I have a house and I lose 60 feet of my seawall, I'm replacing the entire thing or just the well, feet? If, I, again, if, if, you're, if you have 60 feet out of 80, it would make sense to replace the whole right. thing. But I know there's been those that have replaced just that half. Yeah, I'm just you know asking questions because right. yeah, I'd replace the whole thing if it was me, but you right. know, you're gonna have that. Um, and you know, then there's a requirement in there that uh, like for the toe that's kicked out a bit, if if um, if it's kicked out and it's a certain off plumb, you know, it's maybe okay. Versus if it's kicked out too much, it's potentially needs to be replaced. Very good. Thank you. Is there any motion? Second. I think it's good. I think it's the right thing to do right now. So. I move that we accept the uh, amendment. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner Sopranic. Second. And a second by Commissioner Summer. Madam. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got me thinking. Uh, <laughs> Madam City Clerk, please call the vote. Yes, Chair. Benny? Yes. Marker? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Reed? Aye. Summers? Aye. Safranic? Aye. All ayes, motion carried. Thank you. So I'll open the floor for citizens' input. Does anyone from the public wish to speak about any matter? If so, please come forward. Seeing none, I will close citizens' input. And now we'll review the evaluation appraisal report. Good morning, for the record, Wyatt Daltrey playing Team Cornair with the city's playing division. Uh, my credentials may be obtained at the city clerk's office. Uh, this is the final element of the ear discussion uh, for you. Uh, thank you for your attention to this process. Uh, just so that you are aware, um, basically what we'll do is we'll take input, um, we'll take the input that we've received, We'll uh, be requesting additional public input over the next couple of months, go through ordinance creation for the actual evaluation and appraisal uh, amendments to the comprehensive plan, and then come back to you probably in February of Mar or March of 2022 and go through that, that state mandated process to actually go through the process of adopting those changes, uh, which of course include multiple hearings before the city council. So uh, we're, we're getting, we're, we're near, we're not at the beginning of the end, but we're at the end of the beginning, if you will. Uh, with that, I have two elements to briefly discuss with you today. Uh, these final two elements are the economic development element and the capital improvement element. Um, what I, I also, just so you are aware, I have Ricardo Noguera, our uh, economic development manager here on hand. He, uh, I'll 
when I'm done speaking about the economic development element, I'll give him an opportunity to say some, uh, provide some words for you, uh, some direction as far as where we're going. And of course, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions of either of us. Uh, to set the, set the table here, what is the economic development element? It is one of 10 elements of the city's comprehensive plan, which provides policies and guidance which would support eco economic development efforts. Uh, this identifies responsibilities of the Economic and Business Development Office and further defines the focus of city economic development efforts, providing guidelines for future investments. We have several revisions uh, for this particular element. As you know, through this process, as we've gone through each element, there are certain elements that have few changes proposed, there are certain, and then there are certain elements, future land use uh, element comes to mind, where several changes are, are proposed. For the economic development element, uh, we're looking more to the latter here. We're looking at some, some changes. Uh, this uh, element has not really been um, amended all that much since its inception in the late 2000s. So as, as um, is the purpose of the evaluation and appraisal effort, the seven-year effort, uh, we're looking at these policies and making some changes. Um, I've hit the highlights here, namely policy 1.3, which identifies the uh, Economic and Business Development Office's responsibility in keeping the City Council informed of upcoming economic development projects. Uh, we have uh, several policies, and I have them listed here, 2.1, 2.3, 2.5, and 3.2, which uh, refocus city attention to expanding office and light industrial opportunities, particularly along major corridors within Cape Coral, um, which 3.2 really identifies. Uh, policy 6.2 is proposed to be strengthened to focus on additional access to Pine Island Road and Burnt Store Road. We're looking at a new policy 6.4, which um, identifies, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a need that we're actually seeing nationwide for redevelopment of shopping centers with large, vacant, or underutilized big box stores. As you're aware, e-commerce has, e has really taken a, a large chunk of that sort of economic activity and what was, frankly, mainstream uh, activities 10, 15 years ago, good department stores going to Best Buy, Circuit City, well, I mean, one of those doesn't exist really anymore, so that just, that just tells you how the market has changed, but what do you do with those buildings? Uh, you, you, you may have uh, your, your former anchor tenants, which once drew people to your shopping centers, now that they're empty and they start looking dilapidated, repel, uh, repel people from coming to your shopping center. So 6.4 uh, kind of identifies the need to redevelop those. Uh, and of course, redeveloping those centers with office space and multifamily, first of all, it, it provides that mix, that mix of uses, which um, we'd like to see more of in Cape Coral, and it makes those centers viable once again. Uh, at present, we do not have any ordinances uh, that are changing policies in the, in the economic development element, so what changes that will be made to this element will just be done through the evaluation and appraisal process. Um, that ends the economic development element stand, uh, side of this, and I'd like to, uh, if I could, uh, provide Ricardo with an opportunity to speak to you about economic, um, the, the eco economic development element of the comp plan. Good morning, Ricardo Nogueira, Economic Development Manager. I just want to provide a few points because we've been working hand in hand with the Department of Community Development on the amendment of the economic development element. Three points, and, and you've probably heard me, I'm like a broken record, um, talking about the diversification, but as you all know, only 8% of the city's land area is non-residential. So our goal in amending this economic development element is to boost that up at minimum to at least 12%. The second, and I've shared this before and I continue, to preach this and to promote this is the diversification of our economic base. For the past several years, many of the businesses in the Cape have either been hospitality or retail service. We want to diversify that. And if you noted when um, Mr. Um, when Wyatt shared with you the need to attract more office 
warehouse and light industrial uses, that's exactly where we want to head. And you're going to start seeing more of that taking place along Pine Island Road and hopefully Burnstore Road, Pondella. There are more projects coming up over the next 12 to 18 months where we can diversify the economic base and create more meaningful jobs so that folks do not have to cross these bridges every day in search of better paying work. So that's really what I wanted to share with you and we will continue to work with staff to tighten up and, and um, strengthen this economic development element so that the largest community in Southwest Florida can be a more diverse community supporting not only the 200,000 residents that live here, but also creating meaningful work for them for the, for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. The final element uh, that we'll be looking at today is a capital improvement element. Uh, this is one of the classic elements of a comprehensive plan. Every community in Florida that has a comprehensive plan has to have this element. Um, what it is, it's an administrative element. Uh, we don't often come before you with changes to the element because uh, what it primarily does is provide policy guidance for establishing the budget, and, it, and notably the capital improvement program portion of the budget. And because it's not something that you deal with on the day-to-day, -day, such as a future land use amendment, a rezone, or a site plan review, it's not the kind of thing that involves lots of changes. Um, you know, you, the way to build a budget generally uh, correctly, that's, there, there's best management practices for that. They don't really differ uh, year to year, or even decade by decade. Uh, so uh, as a result, we have few proposed changes within the capital improvement element. Um, I'm, remove, I'm proposing to uh, remove policy 3.7, uh, which is related to a pair of developments of regional impact, which were abandoned back in 2010, 2011. So again, part of the evaluation, evaluation and appraisal process is to identify policies that no longer have value, no longer have any effect. So um, you know, doing what we can to, to reduce uh, really just obsolete policies. And other changes are just uh, housekeeping things such as changing years, changing dates within it. Uh, there are no proposed capital improvement element revisions in process, no ordinances in process. And that concludes really this whole process of uh, just really giving you a kind of sneak peek at each of the, cha uh, of the changes that staff is proposing for each of these elements that I think we embarked on back in May. So again, I thank you for your attention on this. And if you have any questions, uh, I'll stand by for them. Thank you, Wyatt. Do I have to open up the public hearing? To the public, no? Does anyone from the public like to re review this or speak on it? No? Close public hearing. Thank you, Commission Commissioners. I think you've done a great job. There is, uh, so these are always kind of tedious. And uh, we have more coming for it, so. Yeah, no, it, is, it is the epitome of a bureaucratic process, uh, but it is necessary to ensure, I mean, this is Florida. We're a high growth, we're a high growth state, and even if this wasn't required by state law, it's worth doing because, uh, you know, we most of us have come from communities where the plan sits on the shelf gathering dust, and we can't afford to have that happen. Right. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Other business? Any member comments? <laughs> Seeing none, our time and date of our next meeting is November 3rd, 2021. Hereby adjourned.